Hey, hey, Neverinos! It's the Bionicle Inspiration Series, more specifically the Hero Factory Inspiration Series this month, because it's HF Feb. For those of you who are like, well, 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 it's the first time I've tuned in, what's a HF Feb? Well, in the month of February, we're all building heroes and or villains. Uh, you can tie it back to a specific theme if you want, which is sort of your underwater 200 million leagues under the sea, that sort of thing. So if you want to build some underwater heroes, now's the time to do it. It's just a fun community thing. If you're going to post it, post it with the hashtag hero february and just have some fun join in in the community spirit have a good time you can build them underwater themed or just build some hero factory characters because it's fun and that's the spirit of hf feb and with that we're going to be showing some hero factory mocks to give you some inspiration for this month of hero february which is almost over by the way we barely have any time left of it but it's never too late to build heroes and heck build heroes in march just because it's fun do what you want but Welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration Series. This is the show where we spotlight mocks from across the community to inspire you. So without further ado, let's do exactly that. Let's start with the first mock today by EMS Mocks. And this is a revamp of E. Uh, of E. That's not the letter, Ben. Of XT4. I don't know where I got E from, but XT4. This is a revamp of that Hero Factory villain character. Here's what the original XT4 looked like. Um, he was kind of like lanky and skinny. Which was cool. I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. He very much had this kind of murder bot aesthetic. Uh, and he was cool. He was really cool. Uh, it, certainly a different take for a Hero Factory villain. Distinctly different from some of the others that we got, I think. But I remember when this character came out, some people complained because they were like, yeah, he doesn't. he's not really like that armoured up. He's kind of just sort of bare bone limbs and stuff. He's not that exciting. So it's really cool to see a revamp of him here, which is a lot more sort of buffed out, armoured up. Uh, and really kind of takes the concept and expands upon it in some really exciting and cool ways. So obviously the original one had sort of multiple limbs here with different attachments and weapons and different things. But what I like about this one is uh, EMS Mox here kind of makes it seem a little bit more uh, mad scientist-like in nature, which I think kind of fits the like vibe of this character. I never really looked up any sort of backstory on the character specifically, but just looking at the set alone, I always kind of got that... Um, I don't know, to me that was what the character sort of looked like, some sort of dude, that, very similar to like General Grievous, for example, that like, oh, they, they've, they you know, uh, modified their body in some fashion and have multiple limbs now and use it to torture and attack and do evil villainous things, which makes sense. Uh, but, you know, on the subject of General Grievous, this kind of reminds me of his assistant, uh, which he has a very complicated name, uh, EVA4D very long series of numbers but uh he was cool because he was I, th I think he has a very similar aesthetic to, to specifically this revamp here of xt4 multiple different limbs here that have different sort of attachments and things that they could be used to you know do crazy weird robot surgery on things and all sorts of villainous stuff so i like that take on the character here really sort of reimagining uh these limbs in a sort of almost kind of like mad scientist way uh, which I think is really cool, and just a great take for a villain. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy the buzzsaw design on this as well. I like the fact that he specifically used that buzzsaw piece that has that cool sticker on it that came on the Exo Force set uh, Assault Tiger, which was such an awesome Hero Factory set. Uh, but I think just that little tiny addition of uh, that stickered element there actually goes a long way. The fact that it has those kind of caution symbols, that sort of pop of red, uh, I think it just, I don't know, really adds a lot to this mock. Just, uh, like, the, obviously the pop of red really does stand out on this mock, and there's the red on the eyes and kind of the red on, like, the heart light there as well. So, yeah, it's just a, a sort of nice addition there. Just, uh, it's kind of crazy how much a sticker can improve a mock. So I uh, personally think that's a, a really welcome choice there. Uh, I also enjoy on this mock the finger design, uh, using some of those... Um, kind of like clip pieces in black and then attaching uh, some minifigure hands there in black as well. I just think that works. There's something about it that seems very sort of sinister and evil, like the, the fact it sort of thins out like that and looks qu quite sharp. It looks like they'd be kind of almost like little sort of claws or pincers of sorts. Uh, there's something about that, uh, that kind of general hand design there that looks very... Um, just perfect for a villain, very sort of sinister in nature. So I don't know. I think it's a great idea if you kind of want to play around with a 
just a, a, a slightly different way of doing this sort of very typical finger design. Um, I think it, I think it works perfectly with this uh, this take on the character here. So lovely to see a bunch of um, a more armored up version of XT4 uh, with some more sort of sinister tropes and aesthetics all throughout. I think it looks uh, really really cool. So it's a great way that you could maybe revamp a Hero Factory character for HF Feb. But let's move over to the next mock now. So this one here is built by Animator X Studios, and this is called General Brain. So what I liked so much about this when I first saw it is that, uh, well, it has a very sort of distinct kind of color scheme, which I think kind of perfectly sums up some of the power set of this character. In the email here for this submission, they did sort of go into a fair bit of detail with the backstory, but the thing I really kind of focused on was they were saying, oh, they've got kind of like fire powers and stuff. And I kind of immediately got that just from seeing this. Uh, so I think it's just a, a nice lesson in just like the, the impact a color scheme can have on a mock. You know, we see here the uh, the mix of like the trans orange, uh, the cute orange um, feet pieces being used there on the arms uh, and also combining it with those malum claws, which certainly look like uh, they're sort of engulfed in flames there because they, they do have that actual kind of flame aesthetic part of it is sort of designed to look flame-like, but also just that sort of marbled color scheme there of the uh, sort of kind of orangey yellow color. It's not quite key to orange, it's something, it's a more unique sort of almost, almost kind of trans orange to it, uh, mixed in with the dark red there of those Malum claws. Very much looks like uh, you, you would see with uh, with fire and things like that. So just the inclusion of those different colors and those specific pieces there, I immediately get the sense that this guy has fire powers. So yeah, interesting to note, because sure, you could be like, yeah, cool, I got a lot of black pieces. Sure, I'll build a, a mock that has a large amount of black in their color scheme. Maybe I throw in a, another accent color or something. You're like, oh, but they're a tower of water. And it's like, how? You know, I can't really tell that just from seeing the color scheme per se. So um, yeah, maybe when you're building your characters here, really think about what the color scheme can um, communicate about it, whether that is, you know, the elemental power that they have or... I don't know, maybe you're like, oh yeah, they're a, uh, an evil shadow lord, so it kind of makes sense that maybe they'd have, you know, a, a darker kind of color scheme in that sense. Or if you're building a villain, why not make them sort of like darker tones and things like that? Because, well, they're villainous, it kind of makes sense that they'd maybe be uh, shrouded in shadow or sort of, you know, a darker color scheme because they're, well, because, you know, they're evil. It just, it just makes sense. Uh, so just always a nice lesson on uh, on color there and the impact it can have. I also enjoy seeing a uh, orange brain slug here. Again, the the orange of that I think helps with this this fiery look here. But you don't really see brain slugs being used that often, and yeah, they actually work pretty well for a villain here. And you can see that he's sort of built in some sort of like apparatus with like a tube and different things there, so that they've got sort of like a. I don't know, it's just sort of an extension on it there. Again, it tied into the backstory a bit there in the email, but um, yeah, I still think it's pretty cool. And it's, it's a way of just sort of uh, adding a little bit more to that brain slug face there, which uh, I think is pretty cool. So yeah, certainly a lot to love about uh, all that here with this mock. So very well done. And just a, a unique take on a Hero Factory villain here. Very cool. Let's move over to the next mock. Another villain in this episode here. Uh, this is a revamp of Explode. Now, I really enjoyed this revamp because... Obviously, with the original version of Explode, he actually used a lot of Bionicle pieces, and he had a more sort of Bionicle aesthetic to him. But as Hero Factory evolved and changed, and CCBS sort of, you know, found its shoes, that sort of thing, or found its footing, found its shoes, not quite, um, it, it developed that more sort of like organic, sort of slick, refined looking kind of texture that you, you commonly associate with your Hero Factory, like shells and armor pieces and CCBS parts, all that sort of thing. So it's really nice to see Explode in a more sort of CCBS focus, because of course he didn't really use CCBS pieces. And it's amazing how well this works. It's really nice to see him with this sort of sleek, organic uh, look, specifically on those legs there, and the way that it sort of branches out into everything else. I think it's really, really cool. There's something about him having more of a sort of CCBS focus, which makes him look a little bit more, I don't know, professional. I kind of see it that now he's wearing sort of like, uh, like actual like armor, and he's not just sort of this... Uh, you know, maybe like B-list villain, he's more of a sort of like professional dude that he's like, oh no, I've got like a suit of armor now and I've got this this new gun and, uh, you know, I, I put some time and effort into my attire so that I uh, can live up to my sort of villainous ways. I don't know, I think it's cool. I think it's fitting. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely idea, honestly, to revamp some of those uh, first generation Hero Factory characters and, and do it in a CCBS style because, uh, well, it's just a fun challenge and, um, you know, it's certainly easy enough to accomplish. Some of the other things I enjoy about this mock is the torso design, which is using some of those uh, Akar sort of like, uh, kind of like shin guard pieces. 
Uh, it's just an interesting way of doing that torso and that, that sort of branches off into the arm as well. It's uh, just kind of a very nice, unique design, just a unique way of doing a more sort of customized torso there, not using any kind of prefab parts or anything. It's really, really cool. Um, I, like I said before, I enjoy the weapons. Obviously, that original blade originally came on uh, Explode there, but it's such a cool looking piece and uh, some really, really pretty uh, so that sort of marbled um, yellow and red color scheme looks nice. But giving Explode a, a sort of separate little kind of pistol here is cool. And, uh, you know, it's tiny, it's small, but it gets the job done. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of nice to see him with an additional weapon. And I mean, his name's Explode. It kind of makes sense that he have some sort of like gun that, you know, explodes, shoots things out, that sort of thing. So it's very fitting for the character, I would argue. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's just really, really nice. And I think it's just a, a great way of reimagining Explode here. Uh, and um, just nice to see him in CCBS fashion. It's really, really cool. He looks schmick. It's nice. On to the next mock. This is uh, by Mason Rulen, and this is CCBS, or SCCBS Stormer. Of course, I did a video about SCCBS recently, so if uh, you're not aware, you can always go check out that video, but uh, essentially what SCCBS is, it stands for System Character Creature Build System. So in some of the more modern wave of Ninjago sets, we've got this sort of new system focus system, which is uh, very akin to CCBS, but mainly just using your system pieces there. And I, I said in the video that I did uh, talking about it that, uh, hey, this opens up a lot of like opportunity for Bionicle Mockists to really be playing with a new system and really integrating it in with your original system pieces. Uh, so it's awesome. And I haven't really seen many mocks that have you know, started using CCB or SCCBS. There's such similar words. There's just one letter in front of it now. It's so easy to confuse CCBS and SCCBS. But this mock here using SCCBS, I think it does it pretty well. And it's just nice to see people playing around with SCCBS. It's very new. It's very recent. And it's certainly something that I'm sure that's going to continue to grow and expand. And it opens up a lot of cool opportunities. So it's just lovely to see it being uh, integrated with some, um, uh, some, some Hero Factory pieces here. It's lovely. So, of course, we've got Stormer's head there and uh, a bunch of other sort of like gun pieces that kind of recreate the Stormer 1.0 uh, sort of gun arm that he had. So it's really cool to see that piece there, uh, kind of like a sort of more kind of customized version of that uh, original piece. And this one allows for a bit more of a sort of movable hand. Uh, and I know it's just kind of nice to see that uh, original piece there being remade using a whole bunch of other different pieces so that it has a bit more posability and just kind of a bit more kind of room to grow and customize and play around with. So yeah, I think that's pretty uh, neat and interesting, that's for sure. It's also really nice to see how effectively the Stormer mask flows in with those system pieces. The textures there are all pretty similar and all pretty consistent in that sense. So, you know, I think it's um, just nice to see that uh, this SCCBS system can be decently integrated in with uh, you know, your, your typical Hero Factory pieces here. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, all in all, I think it's just nice to see people starting to play around with SCCBS and uh, just really cool to see a very sort of stock stock standard, very sort of simplistic build here. But uh, hey, it's doing Stormer justice and it's looking cool and it just gets me excited to see more uh, of the possibilities and just to see more people playing around with SCCBS as a, as a, as a building system here. So it's just, an, it's just exciting to see. So yeah, I love your work, Mason. Let's move over to the next mock now. This is another version of Stormer, but a very different one to the one we just saw. And this is by our boy, Gringat. So what I like about this is it almost has a, like, police aesthetic. Obviously now this version of Stormer has uh, a fair whack of blue that's been added to the color scheme. And actually, I think that works lovely. I think, um... I don't know, I always got this sort of, like, Optimus Prime sense from Stormer. Just the way they kind of wrote the character and... To a degree, kind of, sort of, how he looked... It's sort of somewhat similar in the kind of just the way the mouse sort of flows down kind of was sort of Optimus Prime vibes he's the leader maybe it was a push maybe that was just young me being like it's Optimus Prime I don't know but uh, that sort of sense of blue there I think you know kind of slightly ties him with Optimus Prime a little bit and I don't know it just seems fitting for the kind of leader class uh, dude that led uh, the Hero Factory team here I think it's cool um, but also the sort of the inclusion of the blue there kind of ties it in with police to a degree. Uh, and, uh, Gringat here has sort of kind of added little kind of police lights here, you know, obviously on the shoulders and on the torso there as well. This kind of sort of police car sirens, you know, obviously it's a sort of lighter blue and orange, not the sort of typical darker blue and, um, red for a police car siren, but it still kind of works. And I kind of like that. And I like it even more because, you know, when you think about Hero Factory, 
they are kind of cops, right? To a degree, you know, they, they, they go out, they bust heroes and they arrest them. It, you know, for the most part is police. It kind of works. Um, so I think this is actually a perfect way of reimagining uh, Stormer here. I love that idea. And I also kind of like the idea of a sort of like police style hero factory squad that maybe does lean into sort of like color schemes or you know, visual cues that you could see with cops or even like sci-fi cops, you know, looking into different interpretations of that and seeing if you could add that sort of stuff into, um, uh, into into your hero factory mocks. I don't know. I think there's just a, a very fitting kind of comparison and um, sort of crossover there in that sense. I really like that. Speaking of uh, sort of police stuff, uh, as we can see on that torso where those two police car sirens are attached, there's a really, really solid sort of integration of a specific piece there. Uh, so you might be able to notice it. There is uh, sort of like the body or uh, <laughs> I don't know what you really call that. It's sort of like armor of a bike that is definitely not the right word but the sort of like shell for it or something i don't know what you call that i'm not a not a bike expert there uh but that specific piece is sort of uh very common on some sort of like city police car sets uh or police bikes in this sense not a not a car um but uh, yeah I, I love the inclusion of that obviously the textures of that perfectly match up with uh, all the um sort of uh, hero factory armor shells and other different pieces that have been used here uh, and it just sort of beautifully inserts itself nicely in there. So that's uh, just a really, really, really nice sort of shaping there in general. So I think Gringat's done a, an absolute bang up job of making that uh, just perfectly sort of work together like that. Um, and yeah, it's just a really, really nice part use. There's there's certain pieces like that where you can look at it and go like, how the heck do I incorporate that into a mock? It's so sort of specific for its original use in the set, right? But it's always interesting to see it like this where it's, really heavily integrated into something and there's a bunch of stuff sort of flowing around it and overlapping over the top of it and sort of filling in certain gaps and different things and suddenly this piece that's maybe a little bit more difficult to use is just perfectly inserted and creates this beautiful overall shaping it's it's phenomenal so no i think that's uh, something that I, I really wanted to spotlight here because i think that's just really commendable how how effectively he's implemented that piece it's awesome i do like his snazzy pants Using some of these larger curved slope pieces here, it, it kind of looks like sort of <laughs> almost kind of like Elvis pants or something. I don't know, um, but uh, I, I I think it looks really cool um, and just kind of a nice use of some of those curved slope pieces because again they integrate very nicely with um, uh, with uh, Hero Factory pieces and that sort of general aesthetic as well. It's gorgeous. So um, yeah, lots of love about this mock and um, really like the take of making him a more more, more of a cop. I think that's just really fitting. So that's pretty cool. Let's move over to the next mock now. This is a, a really, really cool one by Ivan Martinov, and this is Captain Dark Horrendous, which that's 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 the best name ever. I love how over-the-top, in-your-face, just utterly ridiculous that is, but that's kind of perfect for Hero Factory. You can get away with ridiculous names in Hero Factory. If, if this was Bionicle, people might wag a finger, but no, I, uh, I enjoy this here. So, fantastic game, but an even better looking mock. Obviously, this is built uh, sort of digitally because this color scheme of... Uh, dark blue and i don't even know what you'd call that like mustard yellow kind of that sort of yellow piece there doesn't exist that specific color um but it's obviously been you know edited in different things like that but hey if you're playing around with the computer you can have pieces in any color you want like those jet bug masks in dark blue that you see on the torso there looks really cool by the way you could easily achieve that with uh, your, your red or your key orange because it's the colors they actually exist in so you could maybe still replicate that torso design here but you know like i was saying if you want to build uh digitally whether that's through ldd or eldraw or studio or any of the different programs out there um you can kind of get away with anything you can do any color you want any sort of technique and things you want there's a, there's a lot of possibilities there so uh if that's up your alley by all means explore that or you know, maybe you're thinking about doing it now's the time here's a sign do it um, but yeah, I, I think that's cool and uh, just nice to see some crazy weird colors being played around with here that don't specifically exist, but actually look really cool. Speaking of stuff that looks cool, I love how he's done the head design here. Really awesome horns and this kind of glowing yellow thing. I don't even know what that is, but it looks cool. But the eyes are the bit that really grabbed me. Um, the fact that he's sort of edited in uh, those sort of like red uh, lines there on that Lacan mask. I think that looks so cool. Just sort of naturally taking advantage of the uh, the lines that appear in Toa Lacan's mask. That's cool, you know, and you could kind of do the same thing, especially if you sort of, I don't know, kind of somehow inserted some sort of uh, translucent thing inside the mask there. Maybe you could kind of just see it poking through the gaps in Lacan's mask, but... Um, 
yeah, honestly, it's a really unique way of doing that head design there and just looks so cool in this photo. So that's uh, that's awesome. Speaking of stuff that looks cool, I love this gun. Uh, using some of these weird curvy pieces that came in a variety of different sets. They don't Lego doesn't make them anymore because they were quite brittle, unfortunately. Uh, but it's cool to see them being used here uh, on this mock because uh, there's something really sort of sci-fi about it, almost sort of like tentacly and just I don't know some crazy weird sort of look to it. It's very very sci-fi, which I think is uh, is awesome. Um, it almost looks alive. It's kind of like this this gun has some sort of living creature in it, and it's producing some sort of plasma that it shoots or something. I don't know, but it's uh, really distinct and really different, and um, just cool to see those pieces being used because they're they're very they have that very sort of yeah beautiful sort of curved tentacle like look to them. So uh, it certainly achieves a very distinct look for this weapon here. It's um it's, it's gorgeous, I think. So fantastic looking weapon design there, and also nice that it's that sort of lighter shade of blue as well. I always like it when weapons are different colors to the mock. Sometimes it's nice to have it sort of tie in with the color scheme because, you know, it makes sense. But, you know, some people sometimes want to have like a red sword that has like fire coming out of it. And it's like, oh, sorry, I can't use this in combat because it, it doesn't, it clashes with my armor. It's like, no, <laughs> if the weapon works, whatever color it is, it doesn't matter. It's going to look cool, you know, and sometimes in different fiction and things like that sometimes characters look way cooler and their weapon is a completely different color because it's some legendary blade that has special powers or something so don't be afraid to build weapons that are a slightly different or very different color scheme to the mark because it can actually look really cool so and i think this is a great example of that the torso design is very nice too using a bunch of these macaroni pipe pieces to achieve this very sort of organic alien looking texture it's utterly gorgeous and we've seen similar designs like that on actual existing mocks and a few other mocks in the past uh, in various bis episodes so certainly something you could achieve with real pieces that just looks absolutely awesome you couldn't get it in that color specifically but eh, other colors it works in and uh, it's absolutely awesome uh, and yeah just in general i don't know there's just a lovely sort of silhouette to this mock and uh, he just looks so cool he's the perfect hero factory villain it's very cool Let's move over to the next mock now. This is by Axel Mox, and this is Bree's Mermaid Form. So this one here is actually really diving into the sort of underwater theme for this year's HF Feb, which, again, you don't have to build them underwater theme. If you don't want to, just build some heroes. But if you want to, um, you know, stick to the theme this year, give it a go. Might be fun. Uh, but I love the idea of a sort of mermaid form for Breeze, or heck, even a mermaid form for all the other different characters. Why not? Um, I, I think it's a, a great idea and a great way of sort of tying it into that underwater theme instead of just being like, oh yeah, they've got like scuba gear or something on. It's like, well, actually, can we make them even more sort of distinct and different? You know, it's just a it's just a smart way of doing it. I like it. The mermaid tail itself is a really nice design here, uh, and I love that it sort of ends with those. Um, g2 gully blade pieces because i believe you could actually sort of form them into a bit of a mermaid tail with the original set uh so it's just a really fitting design and honestly those blades work perfectly as a mermaid tail it's just a, a nice uh use of those blade pieces so perfect looking design there uh, i also enjoy where the hero core is being placed on this mark it's almost sort of like a badge like a police badge of sorts uh just works quite nice on the side there obviously you normally see it in the sort of center of the torso but I always like seeing different ways of playing around with that because you know, sometimes it might not work with the way you're building your mock. You don't want it to be in the middle of the torso. You want it somewhere else. So can you put it on the side of the arm? Can you put it on the side of the torso like that? Could you put it on their back? I don't know. Where can you put the Hero Factory core uh, on the mock? And can you, uh, I don't know, make it a little bit more sort of distinct and different from the norm because that might be a bit of fun. Or don't bother with the Hero core at all. Who says you need it? Maybe you don't. I mean, it is certainly a sort of very key thing for most Hero Factory heroes. They were pretty much always on the original sets, but hey, who says you need it? You're building your own mock, do whatever you want. If it doesn't fit, don't bother. But maybe you can play around with where specifically you put it and what it sort of says about the mock, that sort of thing. So I don't know, I think that's a really welcome addition there. I also enjoy the subtle hints of sort of dark bluish gray on this mock here. The fact that there's sort of those turbines on the back and those sort of like gauntlets of armor there. I think it just looks cool. It seems very fitting and it almost sort of takes this mock out of the realm of like, oh, this is Breeze as if she were a mermaid. And it's like, no, like when this hero was being made, they specifically gave her this sort of like mermaid style armor so that she was more, you know, better equipped for this underwater mission. And uh, I think that's kind of cool. And it sort of makes sense of the, the sort of tropes within Hero Factory where it was like, no, when they went on a new mission, the dudes at Hero Factory would remake the characters, give them, you know, fancy new armor and weapons and things that were, you know, best fitting for the mission so that they could accomplish it. So... 
kind of makes sense. It kind of ties it back in with the story, and uh, I think that's just cool. So, yeah. And also, that's a good sign, too. Hey, uh, why not, uh, when you're building your Hero Factory mock, do a bit of research on the Hero Factory storyline. There's not as much to it as there was with Bionicle, but uh, you might read up a thing or two that maybe gives you a bit of inspiration and uh, can kind of... Um, I'm going to give you some unique thoughts on how you build the mock specifically. So something to consider. On to the final mock now. This is by Brah Onicles, uh, and this is a revamp of Meltdown. So what I enjoy about this Meltdown here is the great way that he's built Meltdown's sort of like weapon. Obviously, the original one had that sort of whip design, but I like that this one here has more of a sort of like gun. Uh, it certainly looks like some sort of interesting sci-fi weapon that would uh, kind of charge up and shoot out sort of bolts of... Uh, no toxic waste or whatever it is that Meltdown shoots out. But there's also something about it that looks sort of like the mouth of like a worm or some sort of crazy weird sci-fi fantasy creature. And it certainly looks like that sci-fi creature would probably spit out some form of acid or toxic waste, that sort of thing. So I kind of like that. You know, it leans a bit into a sort of sci-fi gun. Also kind of looks like some sort of gaping more of a creature. There's just, either way you look at it, there's something just sinister about it, which I really like, you know. Um, so I think it's a perfect way of sort of imagining that weapon, you know, just because it's a, a gun, this doesn't mean you can't sort of take a bit of inspiration from an actual living creature and sort of implement it into that, you know, it's like often with like sound design in movies and different things, um, specifically like Star Wars, for example, um, they would often, uh, you know, try to make it almost sound like a living creature and give it this very sort of distinct noise whenever they would, uh, I don't know, give noise for sort of like separatist dropships and different things like that, because it's like, yeah, it, it makes it seem more sort of real and makes it seem a little bit more kind of sinister in that regard, because you, you almost sort of associate it with an animal instead of it just being this mechanical thing flying through the air, you know? So I don't know, there's all sorts of different ways you can get inspiration for something and make it uh, just seem that bit more real and unique, I suppose. So I don't know if that was the inspiration behind this gun, making it seem a little bit more sort of worm-like in, in nature, but uh yeah, it still looks cool, and I don't know, that's what I'm seeing when I look at it, and that's that's sort of the inspiration I'm getting from it, so hopefully that inspires you. Um, the other thing I like about this mock is he has a bit more of a sort of like, uh, sort of like foot soldier aesthetic to him, and the way the gun looks, the way that it sort of uh, is integrated into the back there with the tubing and the, the sort of um, canister at the back, and even just some of the sort of greebles on the torso, there's something about this that looks like he's sort of... Uh, sort of retrofitted himself with different sort of upgrades and um, different weapons and things like that. And just through all of his, you know, villainous tasks and quests and different things, he's sort of slowly upgraded himself to have different weaponry and different defenses and things like that so that he can best combat the heroes. And I kind of like that. There's a more sort of like real world greedy kind of like bounty hunter aesthetic to that. Uh, which I think kind of makes sense and is, is very fitting for a villain. So certainly different from the original set, but I think uh, works really well. Uh, so I, I, I like uh, the idea of, um, yeah, sort of building a, a Hero Factory villain more more in, in, in that sense, more of a sort of like bounty hunter look versus just a, just some kind of dude, you know? I don't know. I think that's cool. And, and I, I briefly shout out those Greebles again on that torso there because uh, I think they work pretty well and... Uh, I don't know, Greebles are always pretty cool, always those little tiny sort of mechanical looking details like that, uh, it's just a nice aesthetic, so it's pretty cool. So yeah, I think this is a great way of uh, reimagining Meltdown, and uh, we've seen a bunch of different awesome Hero Factory mocks in this uh, HF Feb episode today, hope you very much enjoyed, and hopefully it gave you some inspiration for building your own heroes and villains. And it is the month of February, we're getting towards the end of February now, so hey, if you haven't built one yet, get on it, because it'll be a bit of fun, and I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. So, by all means, if you want to submit your own stuff to the show, here's the submission email. It's on your screen right now. Uh, just send me some pictures, send me some info. If you've got a link to it on your social media or whatever, send that to me as well. Put whatever you think is necessary in the email, and then I will do my best to put it on the show. Whether that's Hero Factory mocks, whether that's typical mocks, whatever, I'll do my best to put it in future episodes of the Bionicle Inspiration series. Uh, additionally, while you're in the description below, you can see the uh, submission email there, uh, but also you can see links to all the mocks that you saw in today's episode, so be sure to check out some of the other awesome things that these builders have built and uh, check all that out. Uh, and also while you're there, there's links to my own social media as well, so if you want to see some of the things that I've got going on, that is the place to check it out. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Happy HF Feb. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.